Give it up for Jesus. Come on. There you go. Man, I'm, I'm, this is weird. You guys are so far. You guys are too far. Are you guys scared of me? I'll, I'll move forward. There you go. Here. There. Are we good? I'll leave my water over there. Oh, man. God is good. God is good. Always. Always. He is good. So, before everything, I want to pray first. I know Pastor Marcel prayed already, but I just want to pray over us. Pray over us in this room. So, Father, I just thank you, God, for this morning. I thank you for your love, God. Lord, open up our hearts tonight, today. Open, our, open up our eyes, Lord, our ears, oh God. Lord, we just want you. We just want you, Jesus. Just you, oh Lord. Help us focus in you, God. Help us um, to, to put our, all our attention to you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Are you guys ready for the word today? Man, I'm so excited for today, man. I'm just so excited. Whoever's not here, they're missing out. Because this is our last Sunday. This is our last Sunday, guys. Last Sunday. This is our last Sunday. If Jesus, co- if Jesus is coming tomorrow. So this is our last Sunday. Oh, yeah. My wife's, um, I'm giving me a signal. All the kids um, to where? Okay. Um, we'll just have the kids come up and then we'll pray for them and Sister Laura will be taking them. So all the kids can come up to the front, please. I don't bite. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Okay, so we'll pray. Um, Please extend your hands towards the kids, please. Uh, Father, we just want to thank you so much for these precious children of yours, oh God. We just ask, Lord, that you just continue to bless them, Lord. Continue to grow them, Father God, with... Um, with your love, Father God, not just in your knowledge, O oh Lord. And we just thank you, Father God, for Sister Laura, that you will just speak to her today, Father God, and that they will just have a great time in your presence today, Father. So we just want to worship you, and we um, entrust them into your hands, Lord, and just be with them as they learn more about you, Father God. May their relationship with you be strengthened today, Father. Um, we just give you all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> all right let's get back to this <laughs> like i said this is our last sunday if jesus is coming tomorrow or tonight so i'll try my best to preach like it's our last um gathering you know what i mean it's like imagine that jesus is it's like we know that jesus is coming tomorrow we know that jesus is coming tonight or or in an hour we're just gonna go like man we're just, i just want to give my my life like completely to jesus like i I'll, I'll have, like, so much regret, like, not giving my li- life before, but that forget about that. Like, I'm giving my life to him right now. So my title for today is Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. I want to read our scripture, our passage from um, John 5, 36, 40. So if you have your Bibles, um, um, turn your pages to um, John 5, 36 to 40. Let me read it. It says here, I have testimony weightier than that of John. This is Jesus speaking, okay? It says here, I have, I have testimony weightier than that of John for the very work that the Father has given me to finish and which I am doing testifies that the Father has sent me and the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his, um, you know, you have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. 
you diligently study the scriptures. You, dili uh, you diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me. Remember, Jesus is talking here. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to to come to me to have life. And some of us here might have heard or listened to thousands of preachings already. Or maybe not. <laughs> maybe th this is your fifth time. I don't know. But maybe some of us here like have listened or have heard of preachings of messages of um, um, preachers or people or maybe <clears throat> maybe um, or from a Christian and maybe at some point of your life you have felt this um, urge in your heart maybe at some point of your in, in your life um, you have heard a preaching or a message that really touched your heart genuinely like touch your heart you're just like your your heart just like throbbing your heart just wants to jump out of the, your, your chest from the rib cage. <laughs> you're just like, man, you're, you're, saying, you're telling yourself, man, I just want this Jesus. You're like, I just want this Jesus. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't get it, but I want what he has. Maybe you're, like, you're telling yourself, I want that. I want to see this Jesus Christ that is say, saying, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know, I'm not sure. I don't know if he's real, but I want him. But, yeah, you were excited for a while. You were excited about the message. Like, yeah, almost every Sunday or maybe we go to uh, uh, crusades or we go to, like, events. And we get so excited because uh, uh, they're, they're so powerful. We get excited about the message. We, we, um, we study about it. Like, we can't just um, uh, help it but think about it. Think about that night or think about that day. And then we, try, we, we share it to our neighbors, we share it to our friends, we post it on Facebook, we, we tweet it, we Snapchat it, or I don't know. But we, we, we just share it we, because it's just natural, because it, you, you have a great experience. You, you, um, you feel like you encounter Jesus there. And so you're fantasizing about it. So my point is, we get excited. We get excited and, and, and uh, we want it. But my question is, have you come to Jesus directly? Have you come to Jesus directly and only for himself? Sometimes, have you guys, um, um, have you guys met some people or maybe, maybe um, yourself, maybe you, you say, I'm hungry for Jesus, I'm hungry for him, I just want him, I just want him, I'm hungry for him, but we didn't do anything about it. We have that desire, but we didn't do anything about it. We know we want him. We're in the right track, but we didn't do anything about it. We want to encounter him. We want to see him. We want to touch him. We want us to touch us, but we didn't do anything about it. We went home, and we're still the same. Went back to our daily life, daily routine. We didn't, we didn't do anything about the message. Yes, it's, it got us excited. We, we understood it. Our hearts and minds understood it, but we didn't do anything about it. And I'm not talking about works. I'm not talking about, like, uh, you should live a holy life. I'm not talking about, like, you got to change it here and that. And that's important. But I'm what I'm talking about is, did we really do anything about it? Did we come to Jesus directly and only for himself? Only for himself. So have you come to the very topic of the message of the preaching, the person named Jesus Christ. The person named Jesus Christ who is alive, who is alive. He's so alive. I don't know if that's not grammatically correct, but he is so alive in me and he is so alive right now. He is just alive. He is not dead. We're worshiping a living God. He is alive. He is here, you guys. He is here. And he wants you to be here too. He wants your heart right now. He wants your heart. So have you come to believe Jesus and what he says about himself and about you? Have you received him? I'm not talking about sinner's prayer. I'm not talking about those kind of prayers. But have you really received him? Have you really let him be the king of your heart? Or have you only fantasized how good and powerful the message is? just like man that pastor is good 
Like, man, he preaches really, he preached it really good. Like, Pastor, you're so good. But then what did we do with that preaching? But, and, and take note, the pastor has a really big role about the preaching. So it's just really deadly if we don't preach Jesus. If we just preach about him or about blessings and stuff like that. It's really dangerous. Because we have to come to Jesus every time. Every time we meet, every, every day, every, every day we have to meet with him. So are you guys getting this? We come to Jesus. We need to come to Jesus to have life. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, like what kind of life, not, not just life, the eternal life, but life in him. The life that God has um, um, given us, like the life that um, uh, God's purpose in us, the original purpose of God, of, of life in us by God. So, we need to come to Jesus to have life. And you know what what we do most of the time? We look for this life. We look for this kind of life in the world. We search it all over the world. Happiness. We we travel all over the world. We we try to satisfy ourselves. And I'm not saying that um and this is the other thing too that uh, that we always think um, that we have to, to fill in a hole in our hearts. And you know what? Jesus is not just to fill in a hole in your heart. Jesus has to fill every part of your being, not just a hole. Every, everything about you, every fiber of your being, he has to fill that up. Not just a hole. And I understand what they're saying, but we, we look for this. We look for satisfaction. We look for, for things that um, happiness or joy or love in the world when he's right in front of us and we can't see him we can't see him because we're not turning to him we're not turning to him so then instead of going to Jesus we do everything else for us Christians I'm talking to Christians right now instead of going to Jesus directly we do everything else what do I mean what do I mean by that it's like we do things for the church. We do things like a lot of things to, to, to fill up our guilt, our shame, and our acceptance. We do things. And I'm not saying stop doing it. Stop helping at church. Stop worshiping, uh, leading worship. Stop doing that. But I'm saying is we have to come to him first before everything else. And um, so we, instead of going to Jesus, we do everything else. So on the contrary of that, no matter how much we study the Bible... No matter how much, uh, um, many year, no matter how many years you went to theology class or Bible school, no matter how, no matter what degree or masters or doctorate you have in Bible career or Bible school, no matter how perfect your attendance in church every Sunday or at Bible studies, no matter how much you do things for the church, no matter how much uh, um, um, you preach or teach or evangelize or share the gospel, no, no matter how much you sing, how loud you sing, how, how, <clears throat> how much you dance, how, no matter how much you lift your hands up, no matter how much you speak in tongues, no matter how much you pray for people, no matter how, much you, uh, la- how loud you pray, no matter how much you clean or do work in the church, no matter how much you give your tithes and offering. If you, not, if you do not come to Jesus directly, if you do not come to Jesus only for himself, you are a dead Christian. No matter how much we do, if we don't just come to him just for him, we are dead. Because he is life. You know, the blessings that Jesus gives, the blessing that Jesus gives us, they're not life itself. They're good. Jesus gives that to us. But they're not life itself. We don't look to that. He himself is the life that we need. Just him. Nothing else. Just Jesus. Just Jesus. So we need to come to Jesus to have life. We need to come to Jesus to have life directly. And I'll show you guys. I'll, 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 uh, I'll share a little bit of like practical ways to how to come to him. Just him. Just him. Just nothing else. Just him. But let's, let's look at our scriptures. Let's look at our scriptures. Uh, why do we need to come to Jesus? The, um, there are three things that I can see in, this, uh, in our passage um, today. Reason why, first reason why we need to come to Jesus because he is supreme. Jesus is supreme. 
He is absolute. He's superior to others. You know, for 400 years, from Old Testament to New Testament, there's um, four, I don't know exactly, but 400 plus years, 400 years that they, they didn't have a prophet. Prophet is like the voice, the mouthpiece of God. Those prophets, they speak the very word of God to his own people, the Israelites, okay? So God speaks to the prophet and then to his people. Because if God speaks, they, they said, even the people, even the Israelites, they were like, don't let God speak to us. We're going to die. We're trembling in fear. So God speaks through the, uh, through the prophets to his people, okay? And throughout, um, and after the last prophet, and I forgot who, <laughs> but after, um, for 400 years, God was silent. No prophets. They're looking for one. They're probably trying to recreate one trying to think that oh this is god's word i don't know it's blank it's a void from new testament and then i mean from old testament to the new testament so they didn't have, they didn't have a prophet right and then now john the baptist came he's a very first prophet after 400 years god spoke to him and guess what he lived in and it's interesting it's not really part of this but it's really interesting uh, uh, about john the baptist he lived in uh, in the wilderness for 30 years he just like ate locusts and honey i don't know if he ate something else but that's why the bible said he ate that for 30 years he he he, he was there um uh he was out there and then he only did six months of ministries ministry Six months, he prepared for, what, 30 years and only did six months of ministry. Isn't that amazing? It's crazy. And Jesus, he prepared his whole life and lasted for three years. They killed him. But anyways, um, so John the Baptist, he's the prophet. He's the voice of God. So everyone's like com coming to him and he's baptizing and everything. And they're, they're, um, the Jewish people, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, this, the, um, the higher ranks in the priests and stuff like uh, in, in, in that position, they, they're sending people to John the Baptist, like asking, like, who, who are you? Are you the prophet? Are you the one that's coming? And so they're asking that and stuff and, and all that stuff. But then when Jesus here, when I saw this, because his testimony, uh, John the Baptist's testimony is valid, it's, it's true. But when Jesus said here in verse 36, he said that I have testimony weightier than that of John. And we can see that Jesus is supreme. Check this out. If the moon gave light and made way for you because of that moonlight, how much more for the sun that is the source of light will light your way up, right? So we can compare John the Baptist to the moon the moonlight and we can compare jesus to the sun like john the baptist compared i mean jesus compared to john the baptist it's like john john is just borrowing the light because moon is just borrowing the light from the sun and so jesus more um supreme and if you if we turn to colossians i'll just read this i'm not going to explain anything because i just want to make this um short okay Where's my Colossians? And um, Colossians 1, 15, the supremacy of Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He's talking about Jesus, okay? He is before all things and in him all things hold together and he is the head of the body the church he is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he might have the supremacy for god was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him check this out i'll read that again for god was pleased to have all his fullness god's fullness all of god is in christ All of God is in Christ. It dwells in him. And through him, through Jesus, to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. So why do we come to Jesus? Because Jesus is supreme. 
Jesus is the King of kings. He is above everything. Jesus is the Lord of lords. So as we continue, the second one, why do we need to come to Jesus? When I, I see uh, verse 37, it's because God testifies about Jesus. God testifies about Jesus. And, and on th- verse 37, it says here, And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. And when I said God testifies about Jesus, also Jesus reveals who the Father is. It's like they testify about themselves like each other. God testified about Jesus when, when Jesus performed all the miracles. Because when Nicodemus came to him, he, Nicodemus was like, he said that nothing can do these things without, um, if God is not with you. So God, all the things that he said, all the things that Jesus said and is saying are valid because, G, because God testified through the miracle, uh, miracle works of Jesus Christ. He testified. So we need to come to Jesus. He is legit. <laughs> Jesus is legit, okay? He, uh, he, and Jesus bear, check this out too, Jesus bear witness to the very heart of God. He bear witness to the very heart of God. When we see Jesus, we know God. And if we don't honor Jesus, it means we don't honor God. When we see Jesus, we see God's kindness, we see God's gentleness, God's compassion, God's mercy, God's love, God's perfection and His firmness and righteousness, that He is just. We see everything. What, what, we, what, um, what we see from Jesus, we see from God. God is, um, God is revealed through Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about doctrines either. I'm not talking about, um, uh, you know, uh, those things like, oh, Jesus, God, and stuff like that. But we see everything. The fullness of God dwells in Jesus Christ. So we need to come to Jesus because he is the only way to the Father. He is the only way to the Father. We need to come to Jesus first because he is supreme. Jesus is supreme. And second, because God testifies about Jesus. He is legit, okay? And the third one, the last one, we need to come to Jesus because he is the source of life. He is the source of life. If you go to John 3, 34 to 36, we're just going to read chapters here for this very last point. It says here, John 3, 30, 34 to 36, for the one, this is, this is John the Baptist, testif- um, he is testifying, okay, testifying about Jesus. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the spirit without limit. The Father loves Son, the Father loves the Son and has placed everything in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see we not see li- will not see life for God's wrath remains on him so eternal life is in Jesus Christ life is in Jesus Christ and we and we go to John 6:40 also when he talked about um, uh, the bread of life when we um, let's read this for my father's will is that everyone who looks to the son and believes in him shall have eternal life and i will raise him up at the last day and on John 6:51 if you go to John 6, 51, it said, he said here too, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And it's interesting that Jesus is talking about him as a bread. It's like as we eat. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, let's, let's see our last scripture over here. John 6, 55 to 57, Jesus is talking here. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in him, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live, uh, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me, you see that? It's present tense. For, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. 
Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. So we need to come to Jesus because he is the source of life. He is the very source of life. And when I'm talking, when I say life, it's not just like, it's just, not just because we want an eternal life, because we want, we want, thing, we want to go to heaven. Yes, those are good. Those, um, the, uh, we, we have hope in that, and we have to be reminded of that every single day so we can have that hope. And, but the true life in Jesus is a perfect uh, it's a perfect communion with him each day and that's the life that he's talking about as we feed on him feed on him how we do this how do we do this I'm going to talk about that in a little bit but how do we do this so what we're talking about here what we're talking about here is like it's like a, a um it's like sweet delicious bread okay just imagine that I don't know which one. Maybe it's your um, your favorite. I don't know. Um, your your. Uh, so what we're talking about here is like sweet, delicious bread. You heard about this sweet bread, okay? You heard about it. You heard about it. Maybe it's like um, I don't know. Just imagine something. But you heard about this sweet bread and you start to crave it. You're craving it, right? You're craving that, and you finally smell the sweet aroma of this. You finally smell the sweet aroma. Man, it smells so good. I, I can't wait to taste it. I can't wait to put it in my mouth. I can't wait to chew it. And you're salivating over it, right? So you may have that desire. You may have that desire. You may desire the bread. You may have smelled or touched it. You may have, you may have the ingredients in it. You, you may know the ingredients. You may know what's in there. You're like, man, you're like being a professional chef. Like, oh, yeah, that's good because it has this and that. You're smelling it. Like, yeah, I can, uh, I can know the ingredients through the smell and stuff like that, you know. But you will never experience, you will never fully experience the goodness of the bread until you eat it. Until you eat it, until you put it in your mouth and you'll never get the nutrients of it. If it's healthy, please not be not a donut, okay? But if if you get the you, you will never get the nutrients of it if you don't swallow it. And when Jesus said on the oh, well that was weird. And Jesus said on the very last um, verse that we have over here, verse forty. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. That is a present tense. He said that yet you refuse to come to me. To have life. It's an action word, guys. We need to continuously come to him. Every day, we need to come to him. You need to go to him. You need to be alone with Jesus. You want to have life? Be alone with him. You need to spend time with him. You need him. We need him. Jesus is not someone um, to add in your life. He has to be your life. He's not, he's not some, some kind of like addition in your life, like another perk of your life. But your very main purpose, the very main purpose why God created us, the reason why you're breathing right now is for you and me to have a relationship with God, a daily fellowship with God. And if you think that's boring, man, it means that you haven't tasted the sweet bread. So, you will never be satisfied with just craving it. You will never be satisfied with just smelling it. You will never be satisfied with just touching it. We shouldn't be satisfied with just hearing a message about Jesus. Like right now, this Thing, this is the stuff I'm talking about. You shouldn't be just satisfied with just what you're hearing right now. Maybe you're like, man, I just want Jesus right now. But you, we shouldn't be satisfied with just hearing a message about Jesus. We shouldn't be satisfied with just reading about Jesus. Eat the bread of life. Drink the living water. 
We need that. Get alone with him. We need to be alone with him and only him and only seeking him. I know you have needs. I know you you have needs in your lives. You have We have sickness or maybe you, you have something that you really want from God. But when we come to him, we only come to him for him. If you really want to have a, a, a deeper relationship and fellowship with God, just come to him, just him. There, there's, there will be a time that you ask. There's a separate time that you ask the, uh, for things from God. But he wants your heart every day. He wants your heart every day. So come to him without any agenda. Come to Jesus, Jesus only for him, just him, just him. And check this out, you guys. When you feel, when you feel like it's dragging, when you feel like it's dragging, it means that you stop digging. When you feel like your prayer life is dragging, when you feel like your life is dragging, you, it means that you stop digging. When you feel like it's boring, it means you stop exploring. You, when you feel like it's tasteless, it means you are prayerless when you are frustrating it means you are not listening to God when you are not captivated by him when you're not captivated by Jesus it means you complicate everything because Jesus is simple this gospel is simple just go to him come to him you don't need all the theology to have a relationship with him you don't need to memorize the whole Bible, to have a relationship with Him. Just come to Him, just Him. Just want Him. But that's not enough. Go to Him. He, he said that you need to come to Him because He is here. God is here. But my question is, are you here? So when you feel like it's stale, it means you stopped seeking. We need to come to Jesus to have life. You need to come to Jesus to have life guys I really want to emphasize on the last uh, verse of our uh, passage on verse 39 and 40 because I feel like the culture of Christianity nowadays is we're, we're trying to prove ourselves to God we're doing tons of things that we think that we can have Jesus by that and 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 don't get me wrong, all the things that we do here at church, they're good, but we need to come to Jesus. We need to be alone with him. We need to be with him. We need to eat that bread. And um, um, I'll read it. You see, he said here, you diligently study the scriptures. He's talking about the Pharisees. He's talking about the, the, uh, um, uh, the teachers of the law. You diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. And sometimes we keep reading the Bible, we're doing all the church stuff, but we miss the point. We miss Jesus because we're not coming to him for him. We need to come to him just for him. When we go to him, it's like, it's like in a relationship with your best friend or maybe with a friend. You don't just hang out with him because he's going to pay for your lunch. You don't just hang out with him because he's going to buy you stuff. You know, you hang out with a person. You want to be a friend with a person because you, you want to be... You want to have a relationship with that person because you love that person. Or, or, or maybe with, with a couple. Or if you're married, you don't just come to your husband or your wife just to have sex. Or that, you, you, that's just that a result of the an intimacy of husband and wife. And that's what Jesus is talking about. That we are his bride and he is our groom. Imagine, imagine this. We come to Jesus for things every day. We ask him, God. Please help me, God. Bless me. I need this. I need that. I'm struggling. But we haven't really worshipped him, just him. We haven't even really adored him, like even thanked him. Or we haven't even, even, um, we haven't <clears throat> even came to him just for him. Like, God, I just want you, Jesus. I just want you. I just want you, God. Because all the scriptures over here, when you heard Jesus, he said, you diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. Sometimes we read the scriptures, we read the Bible 
Because we think it's a Christian thing to do. We think it's because we're Christians, we got to read it. Because we, we think we got to memorize it so I can, I can share it to people. That's good. But, but when we come to the Bible first, when we come to Jesus, we look for Jesus in his word. And that's what he's talking about, by eating his bread. Eating that bread. It's him. The bread is here. We, dissect, we, 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 we don't just dissect that. We, we just pray. And, and I'm, uh, when I say that, I'm going to um, teach you guys how to... Um, uh, some practical ways to just come to him just to him when you read some scriptures pray the scriptures you don't need the theology pray the scriptures just one line just dissect that in your mind in your heart not the theology not not what he means by that but just ask him lord i just want you let's say let's say when he when he said that when he on verse six when he said that, for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. You just like read that, pray that to Jesus. Like, Jesus, I want this to be real in my life. Just come to him. Be on your knees when no one is looking. When no one is looking, you don't have to announce to everybody. When I have sex with my wife, I don't announce to everybody. I don't post it on Facebook that we have it, but you see the result. She's pregnant with twins. And that's what we need with Jesus. We don't announce to people like, hey, I'm, I'm going to be alone with Jesus tonight. Don't bug me. If you want to have an intimate relationship with Jesus, be with him. Nobody knows about it. Just be with him. Just be with him. And people around you, they will just see the result without you even sh shoving it in their faces. It's like my wife, she can't hide it anymore. That's the result of our intimacy. And when you're impregnated by Jesus, the holiness of God will just shine upon you. You don't even have to try so hard. Because my heart is just for you guys. I feel like we're tired Christians. We're dragging ourselves to be Christians. We feel like being a Christian is boring. We're tired. We're tired of this life. We're tired of this life called Christianity. We're tired of this church. If that's what you're thinking, come to Jesus. Only Him. Only Him. Just pray the scriptures. Just be Him. Because by the end of the day, when Jesus comes back, this Bible, this book is useless. Because he is already in front of you. So what do I mean by that? When his words comes alive in you, the scriptures is already fulfilled in you. And I'm not saying that you don't need it anymore, but he, it is fulfilled in you. Isn't that amazing? The word, the very word. Because God, in Genesis 1... When he created the world, he spoke it. And when that word speaks to your heart, to your life, you will come alive. That very word of God that created the universe wants to speak to you. And you can only have that when you're alone with him. But nobody knows it. Drink of that water, living water. We study so much, but we miss it. We're looking, we're looking for it everywhere. I heard a lot of, lately, a lot of uh, um, great Christians, um, supposedly great worship leaders, they're denouncing their faith. They said, they said that they don't believe God anymore. Last two weeks, um, two weeks ago, th a 30 year old pastor of a mega church committed suicide. We're missing the point. We're missing the point. You know, you don't need to be a pastor. You don't need to be a worship leader to experience Jesus. All you need is, are your knees, your hands. Bow down to him. Pray to him. When you pray, be alone. Be alone with him without any agenda 
Don't even ask for anything. You don't even ask God. You don't even ask Jesus in another practical way. You don't even ask for Him to set a fire in your heart. You don't even ask for His presence. You don't ask anything, not a single thing. But what you need to do is, Jesus, here's my heart. I don't need anything but you. And when you pray like that, you won't depend on your feelings. Even if you feel Jesus or not, even when God draws His presence from you, you're still worshiping Him. You treat everything the same. Because there are, there's gonna, uh, uh, there will um, come in, there will be a time that will come into your life that you will feel dry. Because God wants to test you. He will pull His presence from you. He will. He is alive. No matter what you think, no matter what people think, no matter how you feel, He is alive. He is in front of you and He wants to have a relationship with you. So let's, I really hope you're just excited. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be mad if you want to skip the, the lunch and you're just excited to go home and drive away, you know what I mean? Because... Most of the time when I when I hear great messages, and I'm not saying my message is great, because Jesus is only great, only Him, only His Word. Sometimes I just can't wait to go home and just like, God, I want that. Those words make sense, and I want that Word to come alive in me. Because those are the words that very words that created me that gave life to me you will never find that anywhere else but in your alone time with God so come to Jesus to have life and that's the life that I'm talking about and God will take care of you God will take care of the rest no matter what it is no matter what and if we have the um, message, message version, it's okay. I'll just read it. The me message version of verse 39 and 40. It said, it says here, you have heard, you, um, you have your heads in your Bibles constantly because you think you'll find eternal life, but you miss the forest for the trees these scriptures are all about me Jesus is saying these scriptures are all about me here I am standing right before you and you and you aren't willing to receive from me the life you say you want it sometimes that's what we do sometimes that's what we do and I will end with this hope that Jesus is not talking to us when he says this verse 41 he says I do not accept praise from men but I know you I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts that's painful I have come in my father's name and you do not accept me but if, someone, but if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe if you accept praise from one another, yet make no effort to obtain the praise that comes from the only God? But do you think I will accuse you before the Father? Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hope are set. If you believed Moses, if you believed the Bible, you would believe me, Jesus said. The Bible, it's where we find Jesus. And we need the Holy Spirit for this to come alive. Because an atheist can read this too. He can dissect this too, but not have Jesus. A pastor can read this, study this, but still not have Jesus. He can preach great sermons. He can touch people, but he himself, his life, don't have Jesus. We cannot miss miss the point, guys. Maybe that's like I said, 
when the scriptures are fulfilled, it's like when Jesus is here, we don't need the Bible. So let me end that. If you believed Moses, you would believe me for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? So we go to our Bible. We pray our scriptures. Let's all stand up. Let me just close in prayer. Let's just be in the presence of God. Jesus is here. Just keep playing, Dan. Just a little bit louder or just solemn. And I think we have a little bit of time. Are you kidding me? We're bound to time when it comes to Jesus. Come on, I know, I know some of you just can't wait to go home and just 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 be alone with him can't wait to go home and trust me trust me that your desire for him Jesus desire for you is greater than your desire for him have hope in that so just close your eyes right now just put all your attention to Jesus just him Jesus, I know you're here. I know you're in us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. Thank you for dying for dying for us, Lord, for our sins. Thank you for forgiving us. You forgave us so we can have a relationship with you, God. So we can have a relationship with you, Jesus. You didn't just forgive us because we're a bunch of sinners and you're tired of us. You forgave us because you love us, because of your mercy. You didn't send your son because you're frustrated and angry at us. You value us, you treasure us, God, and you want us to have a relationship with you. We want this, oh Lord, and help us, God, to come to you. Not just desire this in our hearts, God, but to come to you. To learn how, maybe it's different, maybe it's different from one another, Lord, but teach us how, oh God. Teach us, oh Lord, maybe maybe it's unique for each, for each, um, for each from us, Lord God. But Lord, teach us, God. Teach us how to, how to see you. Just be with you, just you. Jesus doesn't care how old you are, how young you are, how old you are, and how much you know about the Bible, and how much you don't know. Maybe this is your first time hearing about Jesus. Maybe this is your first time hearing a message. This is still for you. So God, be with us. God, teach our hearts, oh Lord. Break the cycle of our lives, God, that is toxic before you. That is toxic, Lord God, in our, in our relationship with you. So, Lord, I pray for each and everyone here, Lord, in this room. Burn in their hearts, oh Lord. We love you, God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.